It is a new year, I got a new video editing software, be it a new video. Sticking to the subject of making your own video gear, I kinda need a lapel slash lavalier microphone, especially for when I'm talking next to or behind the camera, and even though I ordered like the cheapest one on eBay several weeks ago, it still didn't turn up, so I'm just gonna make my own. And since there is not too much interesting to a lapel microphone, it's basically just the electrode capsule itself, a bunch of wires and the audio jack, I'm going to concentrate on testing a bunch of salvage microphone capsules to pick the best quality one. And I'm going to make one of these miniature shotgun microphones to plug directly into my phone. These are all the electrode microphone capsules I've collected over the years, and there is another one in this broken camera I've yet got to desolder. But before we dive into elaborate testing, I want to get rid of the worst contestants, just because it doesn't make much sense comparing half a dozen of audio files if half of the microphones isn't usable anyways. So this is my test setup. My phone's going to sit on the tripod, the audio jack connects to the phone, and I'm going to plug all the microphone capsules into this thing here, one after another, stand against the wall, and say the same sentence over and over again. This is number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number four, this is number five, this is number six, and number seven. This is number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number four, this is number five, this is number six, and number seven. Reviewing the footage, I think we can quite happily eliminate all of the microphone capsules except number two and number three, and as you can hear, the volume is also much lower on the external microphones than it is on my bare phone video, which means for a normal video, I'll have to turn up the volume by quite a substantial amount. And that is exactly where our next quality test comes in. As you increase the volume of any audio recording, you obviously increase the static background noise equally, so let's compare some clips of total silence, volume boosted by percent. Just for comparison, this is total silence recorded with my phone's internal microphone. Yeah, it's got noise reduction. So I think the winner is clear, you've got it right in front of you. Capsule number 3 sounds the best and it's got the low static noise level, so I'm going to use it to make a lavalier microphone. And even though it would be interesting to go even deeper into testing and check stuff like responsiveness to different frequencies, I don't really have the equipment to do that and it would be kind of a waste of time because we can't really change it anyways. So let's check something different. I would need a really long cable to go from my tripod all the way over to where I'm standing and up through my sweater to my neck. That's at least 7 or 8 feet. So the question is, does such a long cable worsen the audio quality? I've got 30 feet of cable going all around the workshop, ready to pick up whatever interference there is around, and I've got my short cable here. This audio jack goes into my phone like before, there's the microphone, first I'm going to record one clip with the short cable only, one clip of silence, then I'm going to switch the microphone into the long cable, and the long one into this one like this, and then we're going to hear the difference. <laughs> well, that was actually much better than I expected it to be, given how overkill my test was. I think with music overlay you wouldn't even notice that static background noise, so cable length doesn't really seem to be an issue. Let's get cracking!
Looks pretty legit actually. I thought the hot glue might make it look crappy, but as long as you don't look too closely, which is ultimately my decision, it's okay. The cable is basically just several pieces of old headphone wire soldered one to another to get an overall length of just over 10 feet or 3 meters. And as you might have noticed, I connected a regular TRS plug to the end of it instead of a TRRS one like you would need to plug into a phone. That is mainly because I've currently only got one of these TRRS connectors lying around and I don't really feel like destroying a fully functional headset just because of that, so the way I'm going to solve that problem is by simply putting that connector onto the mini shotgun microphone I still need to make and plugging the lavalier microphone into the shotgun whenever I need it by means of this simple mono audio jack. Conveniently the audio jack also fits snugly into this piece of PVC tubing which means I already know what the shell of the shotgun's gonna be made of. Into this first hole obviously goes the plug, and behind the second bigger one I'm actually going to mount a second audio jack, which also just barely fits into the tube and allows me to plug in a pair of generic headphones to review my footage. Because obviously whenever you plug something into the headphone jack of a smartphone, it cuts the internal speaker and tries to feed all the audio signal into the headphones. And behind that goes the big mono jack. The microphone capsule is going to sit roughly here in front of the plug, so now I need to make several cuts into the wall of the tube for the sound to go through. And yes, you are right, my so-called shotgun microphone is basically just an audio splitter with a microphone in it. Look at these burrs. So I went ahead and epoxied that plug-in off camera because it was kind of hard to do and you wouldn't have seen much on camera anyway. It was really messy with all those cables so I hope the second audio jack is still going to fit in there.
Alright, everything's wired up and ready to use, it works, I tested it. Only thing missing now is a plug in either end and painting it black to make it look nice. I'm gonna put the schematic on screen right here if you wanna take a screenshot. The trick behind this plug and play system for the two microphone capsules is actually the big mono audio jack. So it's got an additional contact down here and if there is nothing plugged in, these two pins are connected. But once I put in the plug, it pushes away this springy contact and now this pin's connected to the tip of the plug rather than the other pin. That is how it toggles between its own microphone capsule and the one in the lavalier. Let's finish it up! Looks like I got the pattern a little off center. Now I'm aware that this might seem a little crazy, but I need some kind of tissue behind these slots to prevent dust from entering and what better thing is there to reuse nowadays than a face mask. Remove the masking tape and we are done. I've got my sister's phone in the smartphone holder I made in my last video. If you haven't watched that one yet, go check it out. And it just plugs in like this. You turn it in whichever direction you want it to face in. And now I can record just like that. Or even if I want to record something else than me talking. I can turn the phone around and the microphone as well. Now my audio is still going to be good because the microphone capsule is facing my way. And if that doesn't work either, I can just use my lapel microphone, clip it onto my shirt like this and plug the lapel microphone into the shotgun like so. And now it's the lapel microphone that is going to record everything instead of the microphone capsule inside the shotgun. I think I should stick that into my own phone, the one you're watching through right now, and you can hear it FPV. This is recording through the shotgun microphone. I had to switch camera apps because the one I was using up until now didn't support external microphones, but now I'm going to switch to the lavalier and you should hear the difference. And now the little guy here is the one in charge, audio traveling through 10 feet of wire to the camera, not even 3 feet away. Probably if the audio quality allows it, I'm going to use the shotgun a little more because I really don't like being tethered that much. If you're wondering where I got these Electrad capsules from, well, capsule number 2, the one I used in the shotgun microphone, came out of a very cheap MP3 player. And capsule number 3, I have honestly no idea. Probably a telephone of some sorts, but I really don't know. So this is what it looks like. It's got C33 written on the bottom and HF on the side of it. So if anyone happens to know this capsule, tell me down in the comments. That's about it for today's video. Like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want, as long as it's not a dislike. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!